Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 77 of my brand new comics haul series. I've got quite a haul this week. In this video, I'm going to show you every issue I got at my local comic shop and tell you a little bit about every single issue. But before we get started, I just went on Brian LCS's channel for his comic book community 411 show. It's an interview show. It was a lot of fun, so make sure to go check that out and go subscribe to Brian LCS's channel as well. Just want to do that little promotion, but let's get right into these books here. We'll start it off with Marvel Comics, and I've got, I think, five or six different issues from them this week. I've also got a couple from Image and one from Boom Studios, which I'll show at the end. But let's get right into it. Really big week of comics here with some great releases. First one here is Marvel's uh, current event going on. This is Judgment Day issue number three, the Avengers X-Men and Eternals crossover. Uh, that's a pretty cool cover there by Mark Brooks, but that uh, cliffhanger that happened at the end of issue two was absolutely insane. This event is taking a completely different shift, and if you're wondering why it was called Judgment Day, you gotta read the first two issues, and there's just a big turn to the event that happens. Definitely check this out. Artwork is amazing also. So I can't wait to see where they go with the, the last four issues of this series after that big twist. That's Judgment Day number three. Moving on with Marvel, we've got some other big releases from them this week. This next one is Fantastic Four number 46. I'm trying to uh, handle this issue carefully here because this is the last issue of Dan Slott's run but more importantly if you see that person's hand that Reed Richards is reaching out to on the cover there this is the first full appearance of Reed Richards' sister that's not much of a spoiler we kind of had a glimpse of what that was going to end up being like uh, I think it was way back in like issue 35 who knows where Dan Slott is going to leave you know the Marvel's first family at the end of his long run that he's had I'm really sad to see him go because Fantastic Four was like probably my favorite Marvel comic on the stands uh especially when Reckoning War was going on. But now that's all wrapped up, some big stuff for the Marvel Universe going on in Reckoning War also. Uh, but yeah, that's Fantastic Four number 46, and uh, we'll see what's the, what the deal is with Reed Richards' sister in this issue. All right, moving on with Marvel Comics this week, we've got the big flagship title, Amazing Spider-Man number 8. Uh, we've got the main creative team on this issue with Zeb Wells writing and John Romita Jr. on the artwork. And we've got uh, Spider-Man's brand new suit on the cover there. The last issue of the cover was like Norman Osborn holding that new Spider-Man helmet or something. I don't even remember everything that went on last issue. Uh, there's like this dynamic going on between Norman and Peter. We've got Norman Osborn starting back up with Oscorp. He's now been like relieved of his sins uh, from the whole Sins Rising event that happened a couple years back. Uh, so now he's kind of a good guy and apparently he's been like building this suit for Spider-Man behind the scenes I think that was something that happened in that like six month period that we haven't really gotten fully revealed yet So we'll see where this leads I'm not really the biggest fan of the new suit But I do like the idea of Spider-Man having it like a goblin glider himself. That seems kind of cool All right I've only got one more issue from Marvel Comics this week is another Spider-Man related title here We've got Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number 41 I think it really says something about Marvel Comics in general that Miles Morales' series who's, you know, became Spider-Man after Peter Parker, but is obviously also a really popular character. His series is like four times longer than uh, Peter Parker's ongoing is going right now because they're always relaunching series. And what I'm worried about is that they're also going to relaunch Miles. Uh, we don't have any more issues solicited after number 42. They're doing like some oversized special for that one for whatever reason. Uh, so maybe they're going to relaunch the series. Maybe they'll like take a break in between runs because my best guess is that they're going to want to relaunch with a new number one uh, when that Across the Spider-Verse movie comes out. We'll see where this leads though. There are still some plot threads that Saudi Ahmed needs to wrap up in his run if he is going to end it. Um, and honestly, this arc that we've been having uh, for like the last four issues, I think this is the last issue of it, called Empire of the Spider, hasn't really been my favorite. That's Miles Morales' Spider-Man issue number 41. Next issue might be the last one, but they're not really making it clear. All right, though, now that we've got Marvel Comics out of the way, I've got four issues from independent publishers, and we'll start this off here with Image Comics, and this is Gunslinger Spawn number 11. Look at that awesome cover there. Spawn, uh, the Spawn Universe books are always known for their crazy-looking covers. We've got Gunslinger riding some sort of, like, bone horse with the chain reins. So this book has been really great so far. This 11th issue is actually probably a pretty good jumping-on point. If you've been hearing good things about this and you want to jump on, this is probably the place to do so. Uh, and Brett Booth's artwork is my favorite part of this right now. That seems to be what a lot of people are saying, is that that's what really makes this uh, series shine. And I also think Todd McFarlane is just doing a good job on writing. Like, as compared to his more recent Spawn stuff, he kind of kept that old-fashioned writing style with, like, the really long word blurbs, like, describing what Spawn is doing and stuff. And I don't mind it too much, but, like, sometimes it was a little bit much. And he's cut down on that in Gunslinger, so that paired with the really detailed artwork by Brett Booth uh, has made for a really just entertaining, great Spawn series so far. But that's 
Gunslinger spawn number 11. And next up this week from Image Comics, I've got a couple issues that go together here from a new uh, miniseries by Daniel Warren Johnson. I've been hearing really great things about this. I got the first issue of it a few weeks ago and I liked it okay. Uh, I really liked like the first half of it and then the second half kind of lost me, but uh, I've still been hearing good reviews about the series, so I thought I'd pick up the second and third issue. They didn't release this week though, but this is Do a Power Bomb. So this is the cover to number two, but this is about uh, a kid of like a famous wrestler who died in the ring. So it's like a really emotional story about family, the first issue was at least. Um, and yeah, Daniel Warren Johnson is good at like pulling out your heartstrings, really making you care for these characters. And as far as I know, there's going to be a seven issue series. Who knows if they'll expand it. That is uh, the cover for number two though. And then I also got number three here. It seems like she's just embarking on some sort of like big tournament with all of these different like aliens and monkeys apparently and stuff. So I don't know if you're reading Do a Powerbomb, I'd be really curious to know your thoughts on it so far down in the comment section below. But I'm a big fan of Daniel Warren Johnson's work and he's writing and drawing this. So yeah, Do a Powerbomb issues two and three. All right, and now to end off the haul, I've got one more issue. It's from Boom Studios. I appreciate you guys for watching this long in the video. You guys are the real ones for sticking around all the way till the end. But this final issue that I've got in this week's haul is Grim number four. Uh, so this is probably one of my favorite uh, like ongoing independent comics right now. It really took me by surprise. And it's good to try out independent comics every once in a while. Even if they're not as mainstream as Grimm, sometimes they really do end up surprising you. And I've added this to my ongoing pull list. It's basically about this Grim Reaper named Jessica Harrow. In this world where the comic is set, there's many Grim Reapers. Like certain people after they die are just promoted to be Grim Reapers that uh, you know transport people after they die across this sea of skeletons to the other realm. We don't really know what happens happens after that to people yet and there's still a lot that needs to be uncovered about like the lore of this universe but overall it's just really well written I'm a really big fan of like the main three characters that we have right now uh, there's like this old-fashioned guy from like the 1800s I don't really know exactly what his deal is and then there's this like rock star guy who has a record store um, which is like his place that he lives in the afterworld and then our main character Jessica Harrow there's something a little bit different about her and they're thinking maybe she is uh, the Grim Reaper's daughter something along those lines Really great series so far. There's kind of a lot going on, but it is really well written and the artwork is amazing. So I definitely do recommend Grimm. That's issue number four. That's about it for this week though. I appreciate you guys watching all the way till the end of the video. And if you do want to show a little bit more support to the channel, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below as well. And I want to know what you guys picked up this week down below in the comments section as well. Let me know what you picked up. Let me know what you liked reading. Uh, and yeah, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.